beep, beep, beep. This is a quick reminder to let you guys know that you should hit that subscribe button if you haven't. And if you like the video at any point, go ahead and hit that like button as well. Sorry for the interruption. I'm going to shut up now and let's get back to the video. Hey guys, so I'm assuming that I'm going to probably add this to my actual moving video. So we're not going to intro it, but just in case that I don't add it to that, sorry that there's no actual intro to this video. But let's just get into what I need to talk about or I'm probably not going to talk about it. So I know I kept alluding over the past however many weeks of me filming that I was going to sit down and talk about what was going on and what I was thinking and what I was feeling with moving back to America and especially moving back to America during a pandemic that was affecting everybody in the world. But I kept making excuse after excuse after excuse for why I wasn't filming that and maybe the lighting wasn't good or maybe I was around too many people and even after I got back to my parents house it was oh the lighting in this house really sucks like I need to get some sort of light because there's only places to sit where there's light sources behind me and the actual room lights are so yellow and I was just making excuse after excuse after excuse when really it was just because I've never been good at talking about my feelings and I don't like talking about my feelings, but I think it's really important for me to talk about what I was thinking and what I was feeling and everything that I was going through emotionally and physically while I was moving, while I'm here, um, while this pandemic, 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 was going on is going on so bear with me um I don't have any makeup or anything on I just finished teaching online and um I will probably cry so not that if you've been here for a while you've seen me get emotional on YouTube before uh, whether it was happy emotions or sad emotions or whatever um, but I don't like it. Nobody does, I'm sure. Um, but just a warning, that's probably going to happen. So, as you guys know, I knew for quite a while that I was going to be coming back to America, at least for some time, at the end of the school year. Um, many reasons for that. You know, I had been in Japan for four years by that point, and I had other things that I wanted to do, and I loved Japan. It wasn't because I wanted to leave Japan, but it was because it was time, as well as the fact that my grandmother was sick, and I hadn't seen her in four years. So originally, I wanted to, you know, not tell her that I was coming back, and come back and surprise her and surprise everybody. And then she passed away in January. And obviously that just solidified the fact that I needed to, sorry, I needed to come home and uh, help my family see everybody, etc. And I didn't want to leave Japan. Um, because I loved it. I, I genuinely, I love Japan. So it was hard. Um, I'm sure it's hard for everybody. And, you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of emotions that people go through. But I think most of the time when people leave a country that they've moved to as an expat, while they might be sad to leave for various reasons, um, most people want to leave at the point that they're leaving but I didn't um I just knew that I had to and I knew that the longer that I stayed in Japan the harder it was going to be to leave so I needed to go little did I know uh last year in 2019 when I originally made the decision before my grandmother passed away that <laughs> by the time I was going to be leaving in April there would be a pandemic happening. So 
I had planned for my last two months or so in Japan to be sort of full of adventure. I was going to travel to a bunch of different areas in Japan. I was going to spend some more time in Tokyo with my friend Jamie and his boyfriend Masa and do some things in Tokyo that I hadn't gotten to do when I went there before, like Team Lab and whatnot, just things that were on my list. I wanted to take a little road trip and go to the Zao Fox Village. All these grand plans and then everything kind of came crashing down. Um, and I have no right to really complain about it because there are definitely people who are in far worse situations who had much bigger plans that had to be canceled or changed. People who were getting married. One of my really good friends, Christina, was supposed to go to Africa to follow her dream and work with cheetahs and that had to be changed. So I have no right more than anybody else to complain. But I do have a right to still be disappointed in the situation because it is, it was disappointing. Um, so when school suddenly was canceled and I had no notice for that, that was hard. It was really hard saying bye without the mental preparation. Cause I already knew I was gonna be sad about it, but doing it without mentally preparing for it was even more challenging. And then even though school was canceled, um, I still had all these other responsibilities. Japan still wasn't doing any kind of quarantine. There was no state of emergency at this time. So I spent a lot of time packing my apartment and deciding what I was gonna keep, what I wasn't gonna keep, what I was gonna ship home what I was gonna try and squeeze into my bag, etc. While also trying to spend time with the friends that I could spend time with that were free. And uh, spent a lot of time with Sarah, saw Hiroko, had a wonderful time, and I'm sure you've already seen all that by this point. Um, it was nice, but I also didn't know while I was doing all that, that would be the last time that I was gonna see some of those people, that it would be the last time that I was gonna see Mayuko. Uh, I thought I would still have another chance. So, get moved out of my apartment, which was so sad to say bye to. Uh, and then I went that night to go to Shiga, and stay with my friends Luke and Yorie, who I adore to pieces. They're just the cutest couple. Um, and I was still going about my plans to do some traveling in Japan because there was no state of emergency. My friends were all still having to work. People were still going out. We didn't have any people coming in from outside of the country, but um, if nobody else was staying home, what was the point in me staying home? I would just, you know, wear my mask and stay six feet apart and socially distance, but not stay home because we weren't doing that at that time. So I headed down to Okayama and Hiroshima and had a wonderful time there, especially when my friends showed up and Enjoyed that, came back to Shiga. We had our wonderful, you know, goodbye in Kai for school, which was amazing and so sweet. And I'll probably tell that story um, in another video before, before you get to this one, so you've probably heard that. But um, pretty much, you know, things were kind of going as planned, kind of not because I didn't get to do a few things that I wanted to because they were closed, like the museums and things like that. But it was fine, it, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was kind of nice being able to go around and enjoy different sites in Japan that I'd wanted to without there being as many tourists because most of the tourists were Japanese or people who were also expats living in Japan. I didn't see or meet anybody 
along the way who wasn't living in Japan. So it was kind of nice in a strange way to have that experience and have a little bit more space to enjoy these places. And then after I got back to Luke and Yorie's, my plan was to stay with them for maybe a week and then go to Kobe and stay with my friend Yvonne and then go to Tokyo and do all these other things. And that's when the state of emergency happened. And when Japan finally declared a state of emergency, uh, my friends were still having to go to work. Everybody was still working, which sucked um, because it's dangerous and it wasn't good. And we were all worried and it was stressful to say the least. And while they were working, I was staying at home for the most part and maybe walking to the convenience store, maybe taking a walk around the neighborhood, but I was avoiding getting on the train as much as I possibly could. And I had decided with Luke Yorie and my friend Yvonne that going to Kobe was probably not the smartest idea because initially they'd only declared a state of emergency for seven prefectures, Kobe being one of them. And it just wasn't worth the risk of getting myself sick, getting Yvonne sick, or being infected and getting other people sick unknowingly because I was traveling such a great distance. So Luke and Yorie were so sweet to let me continue staying with them. I'm sorry, getting emotional because they just had such open hearts and they opened their door and they gave me a room and a place to stay and I felt like I was staying with family. I was so, so, so comfortable there. And it was just amazing. I was, am so lucky to have people like them in my life. And like I said, they are just, cutest couple seeing them love each other so openly it was really nice it was really nice to see and um I really enjoyed being there with them and I was also lucky to spend time with some of my friends there we had our art night with Christina and Kendall and Junpei and I got to go to my girl lady a couple more times to say bye and I got to go say bye to Yab and sign the ceiling with Christine and I got to do all these things in Shiga which was really nice especially because I didn't have to take a train <laughs> you know I have my friends have cars so uh, we were able to get in the car and drive where we needed to go and avoid people <laughs> um, and be safe in that sense. So that was really nice. Um, but it was still really stressful with Luke and Yorie both going to work and not having distance from people. And I was worried about them, not about me, but about them because you know, I would be devastated if anything happened to them. And uh, I didn't get a proper goodbye with Miyuki because <laughs> the night that we went to her izakaya and surprised her, she didn't know I was in Shiga. Um, we were about to miss our train, so we had to run out the door. And uh, we were taking a train that night because we were all drinking and it was only one stop. So it wasn't a huge deal. Um, but we had to run out the door. And because she owns her business and she's busy and life is busy, etc., I didn't actually get to say bye to her. Um, but, yeah, so that was hard. Um, and then when it came time to leave, originally I was going to go back to Kyoto, take a bus from Kyoto, to Tokyo but the state of emergency had gotten worse 
everything was getting worse. And there was only one bus leaving from Kyoto to Tokyo. And there was only two seats available on the bus, which meant the bus was packed. And I did not want to put myself into a packed bus for, I think it's like six hours or something, the drive to Tokyo. And then be in that packed bus in that closed space with a bunch of strangers who I have no idea where they've been or who they've been in contact with and possibly bring something with me to my friend Jamie and his boyfriend Masa's place and then get them sick. So I decided to get a Shinkansen from Maibara to Tokyo instead. And Luke and Yorie and Hiroko drove me to Maibara. And before that, we had had a wonderful day with Christina and Daniel. We ate pizza and played games and talked and it was just really nice. And they dropped me off in Maibara. And saying bye to them was so difficult. But I was like, you know, it's, it's fine. Like, I'm gonna see you guys again. And I'll see you again soon because Luke and Yorie were planning to get married in Hawaii in August. So I was gonna definitely see them and Hiroko and Christina was invited to the wedding. So, you know, no big deal. It sucked that I was leaving. It sucked that I was leaving Shiga, which was my first home in Japan. It still is my home in Japan. But, you know, I was gonna at least see them soon and hopefully be able to see everybody else soon. And it was hard not being able to say goodbye to all my Kyoto friends or see Yvonne and say bye to her or see other people who I didn't get an opportunity to because of the situation, the pandemic, and people just trying to be safe, which is reasonable. It sucked not saying bye. But at the same time, like, I hate saying bye. So I was like, maybe it's a good thing. I didn't have to deal with that. Didn't have to deal with all the extra tears because I'm an emotional little beach. And um, yeah, and I don't like to deal with those emotions. So it was maybe a good thing. And then um, <laughs> I took the Shinkansen to Tokyo, had the whole Shinkansen to myself, ended up falling asleep, got to Tokyo. <laughs> And a really funny situation happened where I had all of my bags and <laughs> decided that I was going to take the escalator at one point because I couldn't find the elevator. And <laughs> my Nintendo Switch fell out of my bag and I couldn't reach it because I was trying to hold my, my stuff and keep it from falling down the escalator. And this nice lady came up and picked it up and handed it to me. And then I went to put it away, let go of the bag on accident, <laughs> and it went rolling down the escalator, almost wiped her out. <laughs> I was just like mortified and saying, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And she and the guy that she was with were so nice. They were like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm fine, are you okay? I almost killed you with my luggage <laughs> down an escalator. So it was really funny, um, but really cute at the same time, I guess, maybe. And then I got to Jamie's and Masa's and obviously everything in Tokyo was closed down. So we didn't get to do, any of the things that I wanted to or had planned and I didn't get to meet anybody else that I'd wanted to while I was there or had planned to meet while I was there. But I had a wonderful couple of days with Jamie and Masa. We just had a lot of fun staying at home and watching TV and playing Animal Crossing and Masa is freaking adorable cooking food and baking and we made gyoza together and just had a absolutely and absolutely wonderful time. It was it was great. Um, so then, sorry, the lighting is is changing. 
So then, uh, after that, you know, I had to say bye again. Um, Masa was so sweet, wrote me this adorable little letter. Um, and then it was just me and Jamie because Masa had to go to work that day. And then took a taxi to the station from Jamie's and Jamie helped me with all my stuff out to the taxi and said bye to him and then sat in the back of the taxi and cried on my way to the station. I'm sure the guy probably thought I was nuts, but maybe he understood what was going on because I had a lot of luggage. Like I was clearly moving, not just uh, traveling. At least I think most people don't travel with a guitar case and a ukulele and two pieces of luggage and a bag. Like it was, it was a lot. So, um, yeah, that was hard. And then I got on the bus from the station to the airport and was very lucky that Delta was so nice and accommodating and worked with me because one of my pieces of luggage was overweight and I also had the guitar and I had these other things and they were like, okay, well, normally, you know, we would have to charge you for the extra bag to check because I was checking my guitar. I didn't want to bring it on the plane and like have it get messed up. And I had, you know, a suitcase that was full of hard drives that I had to bring on the plane with me that I couldn't check. So it was just, it was a lot. And they were totally willing to work with me and really nice. And especially given the fact that I'd already kind of been through hell with them because my flights had changed. Originally, I'd booked my flight to go from Tokyo directly to Atlanta. And then I would fly from Atlanta to Florida. And several days, maybe like four or five days before my flight, maybe five, maybe even six. It was, you know, probably about five days before my flight. I realized that they had had changed my flights because my original flight uh, was canceled. And uh, let, me, let me tell you what it had changed to because it was really funny. So from Tokyo to Seattle, my flight was leaving at 4.45 p.m. and I would arrive at 9.40 a.m. in Seattle. No big deal. But then I would leave Seattle at 2 p.m. and arrive in Minneapolis at 7.20 p.m. However, my flight from Minneapolis to Atlanta was at 5.27 p.m. and I would get to Atlanta at 8.55 p.m. However, on the same day, my flight from Atlanta to Florida was at 3.55 p.m. So it just was not gonna work. And I'd gotten on the phone to call them and rearrange that and the app that I was using ran out of minutes and hung up 30 minutes into being on hold, called back another hour and a half on hold because everything is crazy and they're overwhelmed with all the flights changing and whatnot. And the lady on the phone was really nice and rearranged everything for me. But it was just like all these problems happening and happening and happening. So they were really nice to be really helpful. And then while we were you know, on the plane, I noticed that everything was kind of distanced apart. When I had chosen my seat, all the middle seats were blocked out. They did such a wonderful job keeping everything sanitary and clean and trying to keep us separate and keeping us reassured in a way that everything was safe. And so I felt very comfortable in that aspect. And at that point, I was able to kind of distance myself from my emotions of leaving Japan. And it, it was hard looking out the window, kind of waving goodbye to Tokyo. But, um, you know, again, necessary. And I don't know, I just kind of turned off at that point. I turned the emotions off and, you know, tried to relax. I watched several movies. I watched the new Frozen movie. 
uh, which I actually really enjoyed. I wasn't a big fan of the original Frozen. Sorry to anybody who loves it. It's just not my favorite movie. Um, but Frozen 2 was really good. I watched Doctor Sleep. That was really good. I watched The Princess Bride. Or, no, Princess Diaries. Um, which, of course, is a great movie. And then there was another movie that I watched. What did I watch? My brain, it blocked it out. Whatever it was, I remember it being a good movie, but I don't remember what movie it was now. Anyway, so yeah, so I did that. Um, I played Animal Crossing until my Switch died and then realized that I put my charger in the bag that I checked so I couldn't recharge it. Um, enjoyed drinks in Seattle completely. No, I didn't enjoy drinks in Seattle. I had drinks in Tokyo. Brain, come on. As soon as I got to Seattle, I was like, I am hungry, and went and got some delicious food, continued to ignore my feelings, got to Atlanta, was exhausted, got to the hotel in Atlanta, because I had to stay overnight. The hotel was really nice, and I like slept for a long time. <laughs> maybe too long while I was there. Continued to ignore my feelings, got to Florida, my brother picked me up, and um, I also found out that I originally was trying to surprise everybody except for my brother. My brother was the only one who knew that I was coming, and um, <laughs> I ended up telling my dad that I had to stay overnight in Atlanta and so he knew when I was coming and I was like, don't tell mom, whatever you do, don't tell mom. <laughs> and I get on the phone with him and he's like, so I have something to tell you. And I'm like, dad, what do you have to tell me? What's wrong? And the way that he said it, like I thought like something was really wrong. Like, Who died this time? <laughs> and he's like, so, um, you know, I was on the phone with your mom and I was really tired and I thought I said it in my head and I didn't. I looked at my watch and I was like, oh, Shannon must be in Seattle about now. And I was like, dad, no. So my mom knows that I'm home, but she's not home because she got stuck in Arizona when America shut down. And so she's just helping my grandfather right now. And the plan is for them to eventually drive down here so I can surprise him. He doesn't know that I'm here. I haven't surprised my sister yet. She still doesn't know that I'm here. I haven't been posting anything on social media about where I am. And uh, this is where my timeline being very far behind comes in handy. Um, so I still haven't gone to surprise anybody yet, but I'm excited when I will get the chance to. I'm excited to surprise Katie. I have a whole plan um, and I'll share all of that with you guys. So there are lots of things that I'm excited about, but I have really been trying to ignore my feelings about leaving Japan because it's sad. It's sad saying bye to my family there and not knowing when I'm going to get to see them again or what could happen between now and then. Right before I left there, I found out that our family friend of ours had passed away and I haven't seen him in forever. And I'm terrible, I'm terrible at keeping up with people. I'm terrible at responding to messages. I'm terrible at messaging people and it's not because I don't care about them or I don't love them or I don't wanna to talk to them. It's just the way my brain works, I'm always so like all over the place. And so, have a hard time focusing even on what I'm doing most of the time <laughs> that it's hard to also try and add in focusing on these other things does that make sense I love my friends and I love my family and I hope that they understand that me not talking to them regularly doesn't mean that I don't love them or that I don't think about them because I do it's just how my brain works. And then also, I feel like I'm a terrible co conversation 
I'm terrible at conversation when it comes to like talking through messenger or getting on FaceTime or something. Like I can sit in front of this camera and chat for days. Uh, I can get on live stream and chat, but like something about that one-on-one -on -one conversation over FaceTime, I, uh, I don't know. I'm bad at it. <laughs> I have a hard time. So yeah, Whew. we are unpacking quite a bit here. I'm sure to a lot of you, it sounds stupid. It sounds really stupid, but you know, moving abroad, moving anywhere in general is stressful. Um, doing it during a pandemic is maybe even more stressful. Um, but I think a lot of people are under a lot of different stress right now. You know, I've got two week quarantine period where I've I've been staying home and I've gone on a few walks. I've, you know, distanced when I had to go to the grocery store, but uh, I haven't been able to go to the beach or do anything. So I haven't been able to surprise anybody. Um, I'm clearly fine. I'm clearly healthy aside from the fact that like mentally, maybe I'm not fine. Mentally, am I ever fine? Probably not. <laughs> Um, you know, clearly have a lot of feelings, so, but physically doing well. I am exercising every day. I've been doing boxing and yoga and walking and playing too much Animal Crossing. So, yeah, that's what's been going on. That's everything that happened while I was moving. That was my feelings. It's, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm starting my transition back into Western life, which you have reverse culture shock and all these things that people talk about, but I can't experience any of it uh, because I'm stuck inside, <laughs> uh, which is fine because we should be inside and we should be being safe and staying healthy. But I don't know if I will experience reverse culture shock other than the fact that like even just walking around the neighborhood, you, you know, a car drives by and in the South, the thing when you see, when you see somebody, everybody goes and I'm like, oh, people are saying hi to me. Oh, the neighbors, I just walked by and they're in their yard far away from me and they're like, oh, hello. And I'm like, hi, <laughs> you know, that's little strange because people don't really talk to you <laughs> in Japan most of the time everybody kind of keeps to themselves so that's a little strange but um for the most part you know I, I I didn't experience a lot of culture shock going to Japan because I've I I feel like this is gonna sound really strange but being raised mostly in the South. The South is very polite and very kind and very about like customer service and all these different things, which is not too different from Japan um, when it comes to those things. And I was raised to be very considerate of others and raised to be mostly polite, I think. Uh, I am, you know, typical Western loud, like Wah, crazy, let's have fun when I'm you know, out with my friends or whatever, but I think I'm polite. So in that aspect, I, I didn't have an issue. I've always been really good at reading the air for the most part. So I didn't have a huge issue with that. Um, it is, you know, frustrating trying to figure out what people are saying when they're not being direct with you. But I expected that. I knew that was coming, so it wasn't a huge shock. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. So I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll do my best to keep you guys updated. I will do my best to be open and honest and to talk about my feelings with you guys because I'm sure that it's healthy for me and I hope that it's helpful for you 
And I hope the way my brain is processing and talking about and sharing things makes sense because um, I don't know if it does. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. So um, in case there's not something else after this, which I'm thinking there won't be because I've been talking for a really long time. That pretty much wraps it up for this one. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you don't know what to comment down below, leave a Japanese and an American flag. Not only does that help out my channel a lot, but it lets me know that you are here. It gives us a chance to chat. And of course, I just love to see your faces down there. If you want another way to help out my channel, down below there will be links to my website, my merch store, and my Patreon. There is zero obligation to check any of those out, but if you want to, you can. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. Thank you for listening to me ramble and watching me cry and be ridiculous. And just thank you for being here and supporting me. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.